Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Now before going to today's broadcast, are you ready to make demand for your daily bread? Release your faith now as we do this. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. We've been talking about following to know. And it takes following. And I said following means obedience. And obedience will require action from you. Now, that's what James was talking about when he said faith without works is dead. Now, what does he mean by that? If you say you have faith and there is no walk to show your faith now i know people have messed up you know their understanding of that scripture so they say if you're looking for money go and look for job okay now you're looking for money doesn't mean you have faith it's just a desire see you know many things we think is faith it's not faith i'm believing god i'm going to pass that exam it's not faith I'm believing God I'm going to build a big house. It's not faith. I'm having faith that I'm going to build a big house. How is it faith? You're hoping. You're hoping. A lot of times, and that's why most times people go, but why didn't it work? I believed, I prayed, I, I sowed seeds. Why didn't it work? It didn't work because it, there was no faith. It's as simple as that. Faith is not hope. Hope is not faith. Desire is not faith. So, Pastor, well, what is faith? Very simple. Faith. Now, the general description we know of faith, what does it state in Hebrews uh, 11, verse, 11 verse 1? It says, faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, let's look at that definition. Popularly, that's the definition, definition we give of faith, okay? So, God didn't define faith. God didn't say, and uh, please understand, it's not God that wrote the book of Hebrews. God didn't detect it. You know, someone's just writing. Now, it says, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, I said, let's look at that definition and analyze it. I think it's a good definition, truly speaking. It is. So it says, faith is substance of things hoped for. So first of all, there is hope. But then hope doesn't have substance. Hope is just an imagination. Hope is just um, a desire. Okay. Then it says, faith is the substance of that hope. So what then should be the substance of that hope? Then secondly, he says, it is the evidence of what have not been seen. So your hope needs substance. Now, people would think that means, don't just say, I'm hoping, go and price the thing, go and know how much it is, go and know your giving. No, sir, that is not the substance of your faith. It's only knowledge. It doesn't mean it's substance of your faith. Why? Because there is another definition that was given in describing faith. And he, he described how faith comes. He said, faith comes by hearing, see, and hearing the voice of God. Now, you match those two things. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what is that substance? That substance is what comes from God. What do you mean come from God? Is what comes when God speaks to me. So I can't just say I'm having faith to have a new car. You are having hope. But then how do I give substance to my hope? Now this is where prayer comes in. Are you getting me? Because now I need substance for my hope. So I begin to talk to the Lord about it. I say, Lord, I, I need a new car. Lord, I need a new car. Now, all this while, there is no faith. No matter how much that brother, that brother is very strong in faith. Now, wait, wait, we'll talk, we'll talk about it. 
So he so says, so you go, Father, I, I need a new car because um, this car I'm driving is old, it's, it gets bad, I have to visit the mechanic every now and then. Father, I don't think that I'm your child. Come on, Lord, I'm your child. Now you're talking to the Lord. I'm, you're praying. You're praying. Oh, well, thou, Father, thou promisest in thy word that thou shalt give me a brand new car. Where would you see car in the Bible now? And I said, no, Jesus drove in a, in a donkey which no man has ever ridden. So that means it's donkey. He said donkey. He didn't say car. Donkey. Praise <laughs> God. So now you go. I'm telling you how to get faith. So you go before the Lord and you begin to talk to the Lord. Yeah, but you may do it the first day and nothing happens. No faith comes. And you're not looking for the car. And, and that's how some of you get distracted when you pray. Lord, I, I really, really desire a new car. Maybe you don't even have a car. Lord, I desire a car. I, I desire a car, Lord. I desire one. Now, if the question will arise in your heart. Can you drive? Um, I don't know how to drive. Now, do you know that can actually affect your faith or faith from coming? See, you're praying, Lord, I, I desire a car. Then the question will arise in your heart. Do you even know how to drive? Now, two things. That can either be from the devil or that can be from God. Yes. How do I know the difference? The devil will accuse you. God will edify you. So, you're asking God for a car. Do you even know how to drive? It's true. I don't know how to drive it. So I will not drive the car and God gives me the car now. And then that's it. That's it. Your faith has just been killed. Or your, your hope has just been killed. <laughs> it has not even gone into faith. And then, Father, I need a car. Why don't you go learn how to drive? Mm. Mm. Yeah, because the God gives me the car. I've got to drive it. Because now you need to learn how to deal with the devil. Because now you can be praying, Lord, I need a car. You need a car. Who will drive the car? How do you know how to drive the car? And you know, that's it. Satan always accuses. If you're hearing that sound of accusation, you can kill it immediately. Don't pause and be thinking over it. Do you even know how to drive? Eh, hey, Father, add a driver to the car. Simple. Add a driver to the car. I, now you've dealt with that accusation. Don't let Satan steal your, you see, he, he, he will quench your hope. So don't give him any room. I say, give no room to the devil. But when he's the Lord, say, so why don't you go learn how to drive first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord. Okay, what do I do now, Lord? Can you guide me to a driving school? Can you guide me to someone that can teach me how to drive? You're praying. Now, faith hasn't come yet for the car. But you see, hope is being given some boost. You understand? So I'm like, now you understand that for God to tell me to learn how to drive, that means he's interested in giving me a car too. Yet faith has not come. Now, do you know, because you obey God, now here's how the Holy Spirit works. I'm teaching you this as a doer of the word. I'm not teaching you theory. I'm teaching you practical right now. So you obey God and, and you're like, okay, so what do I do? Should I go to a driving school? Should I, Lord, Lord? And that's, that's in your mind. That's, it's top in your mind. I, I'm not saying it's the number one thing. You're saying, oh, my car, my car. No, but it's, 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 it has hit priority place in your mind. Okay. So every, almost every day, you know, I, I know how that's going to happen to you. You, any, any car you see now, you're interested. Like, what kind of car is this? This is a Mercedes Benz. This is a Toyota. Suddenly, you're just aware of, of cars, you know. And one day, someone comes like, ah, do you even... Now, this can happen in a few days from when you prayed, okay? In a few days. Now, that's how you know God. Now, remember, the Word of God came to you. Why don't you learn how to drive first? Now, the Word of God has actually come to make you a driver. So, faith has come for you to drive. But faith hasn't come for you to own a car yet. Understand these things. 
That word that came, why don't you learn how to drive first? It's the word of God that has come to your heart. Now, what is that? Faith has come for you to be a driver. Remember, you were re re believing God for a car. So now, because the word of God has come for you to be a driver, right? Now, you take that word that has come and begin to obey it. So now you're wondering, okay, so what driving school will I go for? You know, like, Lord, please, can you guide me? You know, day one passes. You, you didn't see any sign. You didn't see anything. Day two, say, Father, um, should I go to? There's one driving school I saw, you know, the other day. Should I go to it? Okay, let me, you're checking your heart. You're checking your heart. And then there was nothing pulling you in that direction. Now, I'll tell you the truth. Along, because now this, this thing, Every day you're thinking about it. And then you're like, Lord, I know you've not spoken to me about this. Now, because that's priority in your mind. Then, one day, somebody can just say, hey, do you know how to drive? Say, hmm. That's what I've been thinking about. Do you know I don't know how to drive? Ah, I owe you. Ah, why now? I hey, nobody to teach me now. Kai, okay, you know what? I'll be free every Saturday. I'm going to teach you how to drive. Guess what? The manifestation of that word that came to you, that when faith came now, it's, it's happening, okay? It's like, whoa, this is good. Like, you know God is now arranging you. So you continue. Oh, maybe God will say, go to a driving school. And then you go to a driving school. And while you're driving, you know, the, the tutor is just telling you, and you just enter into a discussion. And then, you know, like, ah. What kind of car is even better? Is it the or the Do you know that's the challenge with Toyota? I see. If it's Toyota, that way you're turning the steering. Blah, 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 blah. If it's Honda, blah, blah, blah. I say, ah, so which is better, Toyota or Honda? I, say, ah, I, I prefer Toyota because this is different. I prefer Honda because this is different between Toyota. This one is fuel efficient. This one is this, this one is this one. Mm, mm, mm. Now what's going on? God has, you prayed, you asked God for a car. You're telling God, Lord, I need a car, I need a car. He has started answering you. But you don't know. Yet faith has not come yet. Okay? Now, after a period, you now say to your heart that, look, Honda, Toyota, Honda, or Toyota. You see what I'm saying? Or Mercedes, or this, is, your, your heart now goes. So it's now narrowing and narrowing and narrowing and narrowing. And then go along the line. One day, you might just be fellowshipping with them, not even thinking about the car. And I think I told you this sometime last week. I said, I have, from experience, I've seen that anytime faith is about to create something, there has to be a giving. You've got to let go of something. It is just, it, maybe not so in your life, but... I, 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 I can confidently tell you, personally, and from people of real faith I have seen, not just theory people, people of real faith, it's the same thing. So, hmm. so one day you're praying, you just fellowship with the Lord and fellowship with the Lord, and the Lord will tell you, I want you to buy fuel for that person in his car, that person that takes you to walk. Buy fuel in his car, and that shall be the seed for your own car. Mm. Now, what has happened to you? Faith has come. Mm. Now, what has happened? Substance has come to your hope. Now, it was not only that that was the substance. Remember, you had the word, go drive. You had the word. You understand what I'm saying? Now, all those are now substance being given to your hope. But for that car to come, faith has to come. Now, God speaks to you and says, take, buy fuel for that person's car. Yeah, fill the tank. Oh, Lord, how much? Uh, I, I'm telling you the truth. See, when God tells you, buy fuel for that person's car, please don't go and buy 5,000 naira fuel. Don't go and say, I'm giving you this money as part. If God tell you, if, if God tell you, buy fuel in that person's car, make it full. Whatever it's going to cost you, make it full. Why? What you're expecting is full. You're not expecting a little measure. You're expecting full measure. Now that's how you apply wisdom to faith. 
You just got an instruction. God may not be specific, fill his tank, but then you have to be smart. That's why it's good to be taught the word of God. By people who have experienced God. And they, they tell you, look, be smart about this. So the Lord just tells you, put fuel in that person's car. And that will be the seed for your own car. Mm. Now don't go and look and say, ah, if I buy food, let me, not, let me not think I have plenty of money. Just because ah, 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 you are following an instruction. Like, okay. How, how much do you spend to fill your fuel tank? Maybe 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. So, oh, okay. Okay. You had the price, you don't have the money. Okay? Thank you, Lord. You start looking for God's provision because he will provide for it. When God tells us to do things, he doesn't take from us. No, he doesn't. I'm telling you, it's not time to go and borrow money. You say, ah, I have to go and borrow money now. Hey, God told me, I have to do it. Have to. No, 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 no. Don't ever borrow money to do God's work. Don't. He is not pleased with it. Because when you do that, you've just thrown that in the hands of the devil. So, the Lord have commanded you, say, okay, Father, I'll do it. Now, that's the first thing you do. Accept it. Whether you have the means or not, accept it. Say, Lord, you're telling me to, I'll do it. Now, out of the blues, either a bonus or a gift, something, that money will just come to you. Now, when that money comes, you know, Satan, he'll throw different ideas in your mind. Don't go and say, hey, no, 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 no. Remember you're on a mission. Now, this is how we secretly make progress and, and without bothering anybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're, you've received the word of God concerning you and that thing, that project you're looking at. No pastor is involved here. Okay? And so, you go, thank you. And God provides the money. The moment God provides the money, you say, ah, brother, so and so, ah. Can we go to the filling station? Say, why are we going to the filling station? No, I want to show you something. Why you sit in the car? You check the fuel gauge. Maybe it's almost empty. Maybe it's not. You're ready. <laughs> You're ready. And, and let me be very frank with you. If it's possible, don't give him the money. Take him to the filling station. Say, oh, get there. Say, drive to that. See that attendant. Let me show you something. Because there are situations like, why, why, why? No, yes. Enjoy. You step out of the car. You say, open your fuel tank. Why am I opening your fuel? Just open. I want to show you something. Fill the tank. And like, ah, what's going on? Say, just relax. Just relax. They fill the tank. They fill the tank. You pay the money. And you see that. Say, what's going on? Yeah, God said, I should fill your tank today. Really? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to tell you because I want to obey God. Obedience is better than gist. <laughs> like, ah, really? Like, you've obeyed God. No obstruction. Now nah, you know, hey, brother, so, so, I just feel him. No, why? I, I mean, no, don't ever think. You know, people are like that. No, don't ever think I'm carrying you because I want anything. No, no, I can't call it. No, I can't call it. So the person will not be obstructing your obedience. And then you'll not be looking for how. Be smart about obeying God. Be very smart. And then you do that, you go back glorifying the Lord. Say, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Guess what? It is a done deal. It is sealed. See, just go and be waiting for your car to come. So, so, Pastor, how is the car going to come? Will I buy it? Or, you see, that will, should be the least of your concern. I'm telling you, to, that, so, okay, Pastor, I did it. I've done it now one week and I've not seen anything. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Follow those who through patience and comfort of the scriptures. Now, now, everyone who has walked with God had patience. Now, patience doesn't mean it's going to be for a long time. It can be the next second. It can be in 10 years' time. But you see, I'll tell you something. Every point, there's going to be a word that God will give to you that will be sustaining you. So even if you, you are going to wait for a while, it will not be like a long time. 
As long as a specific word has come, which is now faith. Because now the day you heard, go buy fuel for that person's car. That will be the seed for your car. That day faith came to you. And because you obeyed as faith came to you, the thing is done. I'm telling you, it's done. Now, there are times, yes, I'll tell you this. God can even command someone to get you a car. And the person might be delaying. Hey, we, 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 we. Sometimes, you know, don't go, just go sleep. Say, oh, okay, oh, I'm God. No, 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 no. After a while, bring it before the Lord again. Say, Lord, remember I obeyed you concerning your word that you gave to me. There are times I pray that prayer. I say, Lord, I sense someone is not obeying you concerning this. Lord, the earth is yours. If one person doesn't obey, you can use another person. Bam! My time is up. <laughs> now, this is the practicality of God's word and how we believe and function by it. Father, I bless you. See, everyone listening to me is following. And let them know the truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.